is. Jay. <laughs> How's it going, How's it going Jay? Going well. What's happening? Cool. Nice to see you, yeah, buddy. Awesome. Nice to yeah, see you, mate. Likewise. How you guys doing? Yeah, good. Thanks yeah, for yourself. Awesome, man. Yes. Yeah, you look pretty relaxed there. What's happening? Yeah, I'm just chilling, man. I'm living the dream right now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff. Uh, you, you're in New York at the moment. Is that right? I am. Yeah, I'm an hour yeah. north of New York City. Ah, uh, cool, man. We're, yeah, we're, we're we're like, oh, flip. The Skype's not working, and yeah, yeah, it's amazing, <laughs> always a mission, man. <laughs> it's always a mission. Yeah, I, I can never use Skype. I can't do any video. It never let it, the connection's it's always too, too poor for me to. That's crazy. To do it. So, so this actually is working working really well. This is great. It seems to be great. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you've got like a widescreen camera. Those shoulders are so massive, but <laughs> <laughs> he's got the fish eye oh, lens oh, there, man. Yeah, right. Are you, is it like an American surname or is it? Um, I think it's Polish. Man. Polish. Okay, I was gonna yeah. say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot of Polish people be like, "Hey, man, are you Polish?" It yeah, yeah. Nice. I was gonna <laughs> ask actually. <laughs> yeah. Mm, cool. yeah, sounds good. And definitely feel free to shoot me over any of those, any of those little mm. teasers and all that stuff, and I'll throw it up on my on my social. Oh, man. And, uh, thanks, man. Be awesome, man. Yeah. That's kind of you, man. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. Guys, man. thanks and buddy. thanks again we look forward to like checking how you're going and uh and all the best man with your with your new adventures it sounds really exciting bud i appreciate it. thanks so much guys we appreciate, yeah. really do appreciate your time genuinely yeah, yeah. from a real genuine place thank, thank you yeah. likewise man likewise thanks. thank you so much bye buddy bye. take care man all right guys have, have a good one man. man see you later bye bye bye, bye. Uh, what a nice okay yes what a nice guy bud yes but hey. seriously like it's the kind of oak like we said before a few times with people like you just totally like sit there and hang out with the oak and it's totally, have a good time. Man, totally. What a flipping legend, man. Um, <laughs> Great guys. How's it going, my man? How are you today, buddy? Yes, I'm awesome, my man. How about you? I'm flipping awesome, man. I'm going to be seeing your face in person very soon, which is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're recording this one just before we leave yeah which is awesome yeah definitely it's flipping exciting man it's been a while hasn't it jeez it's been way too long man it's uh really exciting it's also exciting to get into another week's chat hey hey buddy yeah it is bud and uh you know this week yes we you know we spoke to this amazing guy jay and you know wow it was such a cool chat once again just such a humble hum, humble bloke wasn't he yeah, I mean, to give you a bit of background on Jay, we spoke to Jay Merinak. He is um, one of the most humble and least fake guys that we've actually ever chatted to, in our opinion, on this podcast. Uh, he's a personal trainer, um, a fitness Instagram influencer. He is actually a type 1 diabetic, uh, which you wouldn't say so, and you looked at him, that's for sure. Um, he's a recovering drug addict um, and has been so sober and clean for 13 years. Uh, he's basically just an all-round, no BS, um, super nice guy who is ridiculously determined and focused and a very hard worker. So just one of the nicest guys, hey? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you're well said there, Craig. And we, we, we covered some very uh, you know important topics and very interesting topics and fun ones as well. And, you know, we, we, we spoke a lot about, you know, his troubled childhood and the issues he faced with, uh, you know, uh, self-confidence and self-doubt and low self-esteem. And, of course, you know, we, we mentioned, uh, you know, we spoke about his drug abuse and living with drug addiction as a kid. Uh, and then all of a sudden he had this clarity and, uh, you know, he, he got support and, and therapy and went through the 12-step the program. Uh, we talk about the importance of having human contact and not just running a business online, uh, mm. which was really, really cool. And then Jay got quite a bit into spirituality, you know, and that ties in a lot with uh, how Craig and I also kind of run our lives. And then he spoke a lot about the hard work, the commitment and the perseverance it takes to build up a business like and following like he does on Instagram and also just remaining humble um, you know with everything you do in life you know it doesn't matter where you come from or, or what you become mm. 
and then we are, of course we talk about exercise and the importance of exercise and different types of exercise and finding what works for you uh, we, we cover his diabetes quite a lot and how he manages it and then you know we talk about dogs because he's a dog lover and we talk about yeah. dog lovers and cat lovers and the, the differences of them <laughs> and then <laughs> we touch on our favorite music as well and that's a very very cool part of the chat I must say. <laughs> especially if you like country <laughs> from my perspective <laughs> but yeah no it was it was a really awesome chat you know and i guess in terms of uh, housekeeping you're going to be hearing this um when we're actually already in america so uh, that's really really cool we we're obviously doing this before we go and then uh, just to sort of expect some changes uh, on our website in the coming weeks uh, now that we've been able to meet up and have some photos and whatnot we, we've also got some other cool plans for the website so expect those uh, coming soon to you too and yeah i mean you know craig i guess in terms of the chat there was part of it which uh, resonated with you as well based on you know th something that you've experienced in your life yeah geez um it was it was really interesting listening to jay because um when i was about 17 i started to get like quite a lot of pain and uh, and I had a few like eye inflammation, like uh, bouts or flare ups. And the doctor at the time said, Oh, there's a good chance you've got this thing called ankylosing spondylitis, which is like a form of arthritis. And anyway, I was like, Whatever, you know, I was young and whatever. And later on in my life, at like, tw like mid 20s, it, it like flared up again. I'd kind of forgotten all about it, you know. And I had all these swollen joints and it was really horrible and I, like, I went, it was a really tough time in my life and I, I had no, like, I, I didn't know what to do about it. I was like young and fit and, and strong and, and then I was riddled with this pain. Like I just couldn't really do anything and uh, I remember like my sister visited me once and she hadn't seen me for some time and I could hardly walk down the stairs to come and open the door for her and stuff. It was terrible and, um, and, and like that was when I saw her face like, like that was when I realized this is quite bad, you know, and I'd kind of been ignoring it. And, and anyway, like doctors, long story, like doctors were telling me, you know, oh, this is for the rest of your life. And, you know, and, and unfortunately that sometimes you just take that on board and, and you learn to not trust your body because having an autoimmune thing, which can, can be the background of a type one diabetic as well. Uh, it's like, your own body is just not functioning the way it should, you know, and it's really tough. So hearing Jay, like his positivity and the way he turned things around in his own life and just took it in his stride really inspired me. Um, I'm very lucky that, you know, through having an amazing team around me and support, I've, I have, have been like pain-free for a long time and off all medication now for at least two, three years now, which I'm like incredibly grateful for. But, um, Jay also spoke about just having that support from his mother. You know, she she was there for him and, and just gave him some good advice. He's like, you the best candidate to have this, you know. <laughs> and mm -hmm. and then he was like, wow, I'd never thought of that because he's just, he is young and fit and strong. And he'd come through this amazingly tough youth, you know, stealing, um, being on drugs and he just sort of cleaned himself up, started to win some competitions, CrossFit, uh, karate, um, Muay Thai, kickboxing, and then this hit him, you know, and, he, and so it was a really tough, like, thing for him to happen to him, but he still managed to turn things around. Hey, Gareth. Yeah, but he did. I mean, firstly, you know, thanks for sharing that story because I guess we've never really discussed it in, like, a lot of detail, you know, and it was just yeah. interesting hearing like you know the discomfort that you must have had and i can't imagine to begin what it felt like especially as a young strapping lad and like you know you just your, your muscles are sore and your joints are sore and and you're struggling to sort of be mobile it must have been quite a difficult thing to mentally overcome as well you know so yeah. um so yeah but well done i mean you know and it's a, a testament to the type of person you are um thanks so, and i just wanted to say one thing as well can you just uh, say that word again what is it called <laughs> and, and say Ankyl it like ankylosing spondylitis yeah ankylosing AS. spondylitis can spondylitis, you say that 10 yeah. times in a row <laughs> uh, after this recording yeah yeah <laughs> um 
so no anyway jay fantastic guy and and another thing which really really stood out for us like we were like wow this guy has you know 280,000 followers on instagram and you know you automatically think that okay you have a big team of people that help you you know to kind of do this and he's like no he's like this is me he's like i do all the hard work um mm. and that is like wow okay cool that really sort of motivates you and wants you to kind of you know go and 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 do something yourself and know that it's achievable you know what i mean you don't have to have this massive team all you have to have is the right attitude the motivation uh, the hard work and anything is possible literally anything is possible be a good person work hard do it with a smile and things will grow you know what i mean and that was like a big lesson for me as well i really really enjoyed hearing that from him it was really cool and you know the other thing like we we also touch on a lot in in many different parts of the chat is just remaining true to yourself and that's something that he has always done you know and and it's possibly you know got a lot to do with um you know his mom always been such an amazing support um but also testament to the type of person he is and it's just so great you know like he's the type of guy you just want to kind of go and meet and sit down and like either you know have a flipping big smoothie with or protein shake and and just talk for <laughs> hours because he, he's that sort of guy you know what i mean you could be like great buddies with him totally and like you know the fact that his like best friend is his is zoe his um black lab um is also just part of just you know part of his fabric as a person he's just a i think he even mentions that he just almost likes animals more than he does people you know they just he's such an animal lover and and a dog lover specifically and it's just special to to hear him talk about that you know you see him light up and and that for for us is always like a, a telling sign that you're a good person you know and he he totally just um resonate a lot with with our sort of way of thinking in terms of um not being fake and just be, no bs straight to the point and and just being hard working you know like He's, he's thinking about, you know, maybe expanding his business, getting some other people in there. But, you know, just the challenges thereof because he needs someone that's not going to be fake, someone that's willing to work as hard as he is. And, you know, those are tough things uh, to uh, to hand your your brand over to. And, like, w- will someone else be able to, to toe the line as much as he's willing to? And, and, you know, that's not always that easy to find those people. Hey? And uh, so he's he really, like, by the end of this chat, we were just thinking, geez, you know, someone with 280,000 followers on Instagram, you often think that they're going to be like this highfalutin or like snobbish. And he was like, his email exchanges with us were like super nice. And um, he was down to earth. And, uh, and that's why, you know, even though he's been through so much, he's just still able to connect with other human beings on a real personal level. So we just really appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think now's a good time as any time as it is to uh, hear what it's like for Jay Merinak to be ridiculously human. All right. We are here with Jay Merinak all the way in uh, New York State. Uh, how's it going, man? Uh, I think it's going well, guys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, pleasure, thanks buddy. for coming on. We're, we're really excited to chat to you. Uh, how's your day been so far? What have you been up to? Yeah, it's going well. I started off my day just with a couple clients and... Uh, then I recorded some content for uh, Instagram, and uh, here I am. I had to jump on a couple of business business calls, and then now I'm here with you guys. So. Yeah, that's cool, man. So, so are you still actually uh, taking clients? Um, I am. I actually. Um, so when I started my online business about a year ago, I started to kind of cut back on some of my actual uh, one-on-one training. So right now, I still have a. I have like a foundational base of training, but I'm spending more time on the online stuff. Yeah. Do, do you find that you do that just, I guess, for the pure love of it? Uh, or is it, is, it, do, do, is it something you still sort of need to do to earn cash and stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you know, I probably could go completely online and I could be self-sustaining through, through the online business. But yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy it. It's, you know, it's something that I love to do. And I don't know, I feel like, 
I feel like it would just be bad for me to like leave all that behind. You know, I feel yeah, like it's yeah. something that kind of keeps me humble. It keeps me kind of in the workforce and kind of living an everyday life of like getting up, getting out of the house. And, you know, like there's definitely some positives to, you know, working from home and some luxury to that. But uh, there's something to be said about getting out there, you know, being social and, you know, and having like a normal, a normal job, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. But I mean, hey, yeah. Gareth's working yeah. from home now as well. And like, I've, I've seen him talk about that as well. Hey Gareth. Yeah, I can totally relate, but like, uh, you know, I started working online as well. And I think one of the, the well, the biggest thing that I miss is people. And yeah. it's such an important thing to do, still make that effort to go into, you know, wherever it is to, to have that, you know, human interaction. It's just, um, you, you can't put a value on that at all. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it really, it really just keeps you humble too, you know, yeah. um, you know, so you don't get too, too relaxed, you know, sitting totally. at home, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <man. laughs> hey Jay, what, what kind of, um, people are you seeing? What kind of clients are you, um, working with at the moment? Uh, so right now I have uh, a few in-home clients. Um, and then I have a few clients that I train at the gym. Um, it's kind of a wide variety. You know, I have, you know, generally they're, you know, older clients at this point. Um, I have some clients that are, in really, really good shape, you know, that are kind of pushing the bar a little bit. And I have other clients that are just kind of maintaining and just kind of training for longevity. Uh, I have one in-home client who's actually uh, the father of a good friend of mine that I kind of grew up with. And he has um, a disease where he's, you know, um, unfortunately in a wheelchair and he has mm-hmm. physical therapy style stuff that he needs to be doing. So I, I go to his house twice a week and just do all his physical therapy with him and, and kind of just kind of wow. keep him moving and mobile. So yeah, it's kind of a wide range, you know, of, uh, of people, which is, which is great and which I really enjoy. You know, it's not, it's funny. I had someone walk in the gym somewhat recently and like, you know, they took a look at me and they're like, Oh, I'm, I'm never training with you. you, know, you <laughs> like you probably have to be so fit to train with you. And it's like, you know, it's a little bit crazy that I feel like people think that way, you know, yeah. it's like, no, not at all. Actually. I have very few people that are as fit as me. You know, it's usually people that, you know, don't know how to be fit on their own, you know, yeah. and that's why people, you know, pay me a lot of money, right. Yeah. Yeah. To, to help them, you know, kind of break through those barriers that, that they can't break through themselves, you know? So yeah, it's a lot of my clientele is not, you know, doing the crazy stuff that I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And, and are you, te- are you like, I mean, besides the, the guy that you're helping with like physiotherapy stuff, are you, are you doing like more CrossFit type of training or is it a complete mix of stuff? Uh, I've actually kind of gotten away from the CrossFit style training. Uh, there's definitely a lot of things I love about CrossFit training. Um, yeah. And there's definitely probably certain facets of CrossFit that I use with my everyday clients. But now I've really kind of just kind of turned a leaf uh, in my training. And um, I, I mean, my own personal training. And then, of course, yeah. it kind of filters out into my clients' training as well. But, you know, really, really training for functionality and, um, you know, and, and longevity is really kind of my focus now with my clients, you know, and I can kind of turn it up a notch with certain people when I need to, or kind of turn it back. But generally I can use the same kind of train structure with each client, you know, it doesn't really necessarily need to change, you know, change the details. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's just kind of evolved and to the point where most people don't need that style of training, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if you want that and you're competitive and you love that kind of fire and that competition, then absolutely do it. If, as long as you're doing it safely and proper technique, it's great. But yeah. most people, in my opinion, don't need to train that way. Yeah. So, so the guy, the, the, your friend's dad in the, in the wheelchair, I mean, that must be pretty rewarding, I'd imagine, just to like see him getting some movement going and, and feeling good. How does he respond to like your um, exercises and stuff? Is he, is he feeling good? Does he, um, yeah, does he like give it a good go? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's he's got a great mentality. He's an inspiring guy. You know, he's he's been in a wheelchair for a while, and unfortunately, with the disease that he has, his muscles just continue to atrophy, and um, you know, unfortunately, that'll just kind of happen as time goes on. But he always is super positive. Always gives his best effort. You know, I kind of push him in a similar way that I would with an old clown. I'm like, come on, man. You know, get that. Yeah. You know, get for him, it. you know, for him, it's like a two pound dumbbell sometimes. But it's like, yeah, you know, it's still kind of. He still puts in work and, and has just a great attitude, um, which is awesome. And what's cool about him particularly is that I was, you know, really good friends with his son for a long time. Uh, so he's kind of like, you know, he's kind of slept over his house a million times. As a kid, <laughs> yeah. You know? So it's kind of 
uh, <laughs> it's kind of a cool situation. So. It's yeah, you kind of like you you've become the 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 pegging uh, has changed a little bit now. You're kind of like more equals in some strange way, you know. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's cool. It's like it's so cool. I, I love like catching up again with like um my mates uh, like folks and stuff like that you know now at this age guys like you know you as well you've grown up with them and you've known them like your whole life and now it's, it's just a different vibe and you have this cool connection with them because you've grown up with them and had yeah. the sleepovers and all those sort of things <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So, so so jay like um i see there's a little picture in the background uh uh, it's a beautiful dog there. Uh, yep. You you're somewhat of an animal lover. Is that your is that your current pup? Yeah, that's that's Zoe. She's my uh, three and a half year black lab. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm definitely a, Chris a crazy dog lover, man. It's just uh, yeah. I couldn't live without a dog. She's definitely <laughs> definitely my best friend. Definitely the, you know the the thing I spend the most time with. And uh, yeah, I just yeah. just love her to death. Is she oh. around? Yeah, uh, she's actually in in the bedroom. I had to because otherwise she'd be probably jumping all over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's that would be cool actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But isn't it cool? Like dogs are. I don't know what it is. I always think about it. Like they, they just flip and love you so much. Like you know, and they, there's never like a bad day. It seems they're always yeah. just so happy to see you, and it's just awesome. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. I mean, I've always heard you know, dog is god spelled backwards right uh -huh. like, you know, it's like dogs are really like heaven sent you know well, you know whether you believe in you know god or not whatever yeah. you know it's, they're just incredible beings you know that only show unconditional love only happy to see yeah. you they, they they forgive you immediately yeah. you know what i mean it's like we should really all aspire to be more like a dog totally <laughs> man totally <laughs> so so jay are you are you um a bit of a cat person as well <laughs> I gotta say, I am I'm not a cat person. <laughs> uh, I frown upon those that that are sometimes. Yeah. But I mean, as I've gotten older and a little more mature, I've I've kind of let some of that go and accepted that you know, there are cat people out there in the world. You know. Uh, it's so funny. I was I was walking past this lady's house just around the corner from me the other day, and she she must have like 15 cats or something like that. <laughs> and uh, she was just like standing like outside her house and all these cats were just there. And I was, uh, you know, I was thinking these things in my head as well. Oh, you're a cat person. And uh, <laughs> I yeah. guess uh, I've also got sort of probably more mature and, and understand that, you know, they are. <laughs> That's okay. I, I had a, my, my life changed when I, I had a girlfriend once that had a, uh well, well my, my well my current fiance she her she had a cat that i um that i used to play uh catch with uh, you know it would or fetch it would yeah not catch fetch so like, <laughs> <that'd be amazing. laughs> so, so i mean it was and I, I had new respect for the for cats because this thing was the coolest thing it would come there it would come and like call you and then you'd throw the little, little mouse and it would bring it back wherever it was and I actually kind of really, really enjoyed this cat. So, but so, so I did change my thinking on cats just a little bit, but yeah, I know exactly what you guys mean. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like, I feel like every now and then there's a cat out there that's very dog like, you know, where you yeah, kind of, yeah. it, do, it does Dude, that's it. change your perspective, you know, <laughs> totally. but they're more dog like. That's the, that's probably the, the key right there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Classic. So yeah, what is your what does a typical day look like for you, Jay? Like at the moment, um... uh, a typical day. I mean, usually I start off with an in-home client. It's usually how I start my day. You know, generally I'm up at you know five fifteen and have my first client around six a.m. And then uh, after that client, I'll head back to the house, cook some breakfast, and then head to the gym for a few clients. And then after that, that'll be kind of around eleven eleven thirty is generally my time that I film content, I work out. And that kind of thing so you know do that for a couple hours and get as much content as i can generally in each each workout session that i do and and then i'll go home you know i'm really fortunate that i'm i live close to my work too so i can head home and hang out with zoe and and then head back to the gym usually for a couple more clients and then yeah you know in between you know emails and stuff like that and uh you know just spending time right now i'm, I'm working on a uh, the second um, or the sequel to, to the workout program I just released uh, a few months ago. So I'm just super busy. A lot of stuff, you know, goes into creating 
yeah. all the content and the programs and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm just, I'm busy, man. I'm always, mm. always busy. So it's good. Yeah. And, and, and Jay, it's like really interesting. Like, you know, you see all these sort of um, fitness guys and girls on, on Instagram and, you know, it's not exactly easy, is it? Like who, who helps you with the filming? Is, is it yourself? Do you set up like a tripod and then, and then you've got to do the editing. Do you have anyone that helps you with that? So right now I'm, I'm doing everything on my own, wow. uh, which is, so right now I can handle it all. Um, it's definitely inconvenient at times and sometimes it is definitely a grind. Uh, I'm at a point I could probably really use someone to help me out. Uh, but it's tough. You know, I'm super particular about who I work with and mm, yeah. who I associate with, especially when it comes to business, especially when it comes to my brand. So it's been, you know, it's, I haven't really been looking too much, but it's, it's tough. You know, I won't just welcome anybody on board. Uh, yeah. It has to be a right fit. I have to really vibe with the person and, uh, and they got to be near me as well. You know, they got to be close. Yeah. So yeah, right now it's, uh, I'm doing the best I can, but just kind of on my own, you know, I, I build, all the infrastructure to my programs. I shoot, I edit, uh, I do all the marketing. I just, I do everything. So, wow. um, and actually I kind of like that, you know, I think feel like with, with business, I just love and probably other aspects of my life as well. You know, I love being in control, you know, so it's, it's been, it's been good so far, but you know, definitely probably in the next few months, I got to really start thinking about and considering bringing somebody on board to help because it would make things go obviously a lot faster. And, yeah. So I can, I can imagine like, of, so, yeah. Sorry, like, yeah, I can imagine like you must spend almost just as much time like editing or you probably even more than you do sort of recording. Yeah. That, that, that's the most brutal part is <laughs> sitting yeah. on the computer for, you know, five hour clips, just, yeah. just oh, cutting wow. video, cutting the same movements and then laying, yeah. laying texts on all the videos, oh, wow. you know? So yeah, it's time consuming, but you know, as long as I, I, I break it up and, and do it in small chunks and just kind of have a bit of a schedule, then it never gets overwhelming. It's just kind of like, okay, I have, you know, week one through four to get done. You know, let me just get that done, finish that. You know, then I, you know, kind of take a breath and, and kind of keep, keep flowing in that regard. So yeah, it's just, it's really so important to, to kind of, you know, have some organization with, with the process. Yeah, sure. What are the what are the kind of traits that you look for if you will be looking for someone? What are what kind of person are you um, sort of do you connect with? Uh, you know, I definitely need someone that kind of has the same work ethic as I do. Uh, I just have <laughs> I have very little tolerance for people that kind of slack. You know, it's <laughs> it's like we gotta we gotta move. You know, when you say you're gonna do something, you gotta do it. You know, you know, <laughs> yeah. just basic stuff like that. Mm. We all kind of connect to that. So. Uh, you know, and someone that knows, knows what they're doing is someone that can kind of fill the holes that I have within my character, um, in just regular life, but also in business, right? It's like, there are yeah. things that I fall short on. There are things I just, I'm not great at in business. And of course, I'm looking for someone who kind of can fill those gaps a bit, sure. kind of take things and elevate my brand and elevate me as a person and keep me motivated as well. Yeah. yeah. But that's super inspiring, but like, just the message behind what you're saying is like so important, you know, so someone like yourself, you have something like 286,000 followers on Instagram, you know, and you, you look at the, you look at people and you're like, wow, you know, they, they must have like tons of people working for them and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And um, it's just really important. It's just like really cool to know, you know, that you're like, no, this is all me. I do it. Um, the, it's just, pure hard work, you know, and, uh, I think that's an important message to let a lot of people know what it takes to kind of get to, to where you are. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, it's, I've just never been, I've never been handed anything either, you know, like certain people are fortunate that, you know, they have the right people around them at the right time where, mm. you know, they can have someone managing all their projects, you know, and there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. You know, if I think if the right thing fell upon me as well, I would capitalize on it. Yeah but it just wasn't my path, you know? Um, so there's just been so many instances where I've like hit a point where I'm like, all right, I gotta, I gotta find somebody. I gotta, I gotta mm -hmm. do something. I need help. Yeah. Right. And I start, I start to kind of search, right. I start to kind of put that into the universe and I just feel like every time I've done it, it kind of yeah. comes back like, no, dude, <laughs> you got more work to do. Like you need to still do this on your own, you know? And, uh, so yeah, it's just been the, the, the path, um, as of right now. And yeah. Yeah. It, it builds character. 100%. You 
you know, yeah. this, this oh. stuff isn't easy, you know, and ultimately too, it's, it's tough to the idea of like turning over my brand to somebody else, mm. is a tough thing for me to handle. And I know eventually I'll probably have to do that if I want to take it yeah. to this level, but there's still, I have so much attachment to, to, to my brand and what I've created that it's like, no, I need to, I need to know how to do everything, you know, yeah. I can't just like, you know what I mean? So totally, but yeah. again, you know, I'm going to have to detach from that to some extent, you know, yeah. at some point, but for right now I'm like, Nope, <laughs> Yeah. this is my baby. And, and I'm going to just keep building it until I can't handle it anymore. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I love There's that. so much value in that though. You know, like Gareth and I have spoken about that too. Quite a lot is when you know exactly how to do each step in your business uh, yourself and you've literally sat there and done every little aspect of it, you, when you do invite someone into the team or onto the team, you just have that total understanding of what needs to be done. And there's, uh, you still have way more control over what's happening because you've done it yourself, you know? So uh, I think that's, that's always like valuable that you've gone through that process, you know, yourself. Yeah. 100%. And also you got to prepare for, for the unknown sometimes as well. It's like, what if, you know, if we're having relationships and relationships, go go yeah. awry at times you know things yeah. happen you know and it you know when you put all your eggs in one basket sometimes you can kind of be left with a serious yeah. problem you yeah know? true so it's exactly important. it's important to have some knowledge right like you're saying about yeah. the steps that it takes in business so just in case something did happen it's yeah. you wouldn't be completely screwed you would be able yeah. to like okay i gotta buckle down and take charge until i find somebody you know or right. something like that yeah yeah for sure yeah and, but, but while we just sort of on on the subject um you know, you would probably be seen as like an Instagram influencer. How, how does that make you feel? Uh, it's funny. I, I don't, a lot of the time I don't see myself like that. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm trapped between my own two ears, right? Mm. And, uh, you know, for a, a big part of my life, I was always this really insecure, uh, very fearful, mm. a lot of self-doubt, a little low self-esteem. So it, that stuff has still in some way, I feel like it's kind of balanced me out. Right. So as I've yeah. gained success in my life and, and, and continue to kind of build and, and have success and, and get all this recognition and, you know, um, I don't know, because, because of that, like <laughs> super deep, mm. you know, insecurity, all that kind of stuff. But like, I feel like now I'm kind of like whole and mm. I'm just way more balanced. So I never, I don't know. I never really, I've never been an arrogant person. I've never been, uh, you know, look at me, look at me. I've never been that mm. kind of guy. So uh, it's definitely cool. You know, it makes me feel great. You know, when yeah. I get I get constant comments from people like, dude, you inspire me. And, and I, I absorb that stuff and it's real to me. But at the same time, yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. I just don't put myself up on, on such a pedestal. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, listen, man, it's, I'm, I'm truly living a dream. Yeah. yeah. But you know what, the, the cool thing about your, um, you know, your Instagram, for example, is that you, you certainly never get that feeling like that you're an arrogant person. You're like, this is what I do. I love it. Uh, and you can come along for this journey kind of thing. And, and I think, you know, that's what attracted Gareth and I to your content as well is because it's, you do see a lot of people out there that are like talking themselves up into this massive um, you know, in a big way. And, and it's kind of like, you can almost just tell or see through some of that, you know? And, and so we, we really dig people that are putting content up like yourself, like, which is, I guess that's who you are intrinsically, but also I guess a bit of a decision as well, you know? Yeah, no, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. And yeah, you know, I think for myself too, I, I start to go away from those people as well. They're just kind of, yeah. You know, you really can kind of tell right through people's mm. co content, mm. like who is kind of all about themselves, and and you know, and there's nothing wrong with that in certain situations. You know, there's nothing yeah. wrong with yeah. like you know feeling good about yourself and, and putting yourself out there and being proud sure. of of you know what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, you can you can definitely tell sometimes just just by the content, right? Totally, you know? but yeah. <laughs> just kind of like who they are a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, you, you've uh, obviously got an interesting story. You've come a long way. You're talking about challenges and that kind of thing. And part of, um, you know, this uh, content that we put up uh, in our podcast is uh, we love to just hear from uh, our guests, you know, what makes them uh, who they are. And obviously, 
uh, you've had your your trials and tribulations like like everyone has and maybe some more than you know uh, than some uh, but maybe yeah take us back to to the young jay and uh, and we growing up and and what life was like for you uh, with your mum and your brother and that, and, and your two brother uh, well, your older brother uh, and uh, give us a little bit of an insight into yeah how how things started off for you as a youngster sure yeah you know it's it's funny i've, I've told the story so many times it's it's kind of cool to see how it evolves and how I've, I've changed and how I kind of relay the message and, and the story. Uh, but, you know, like I was kind of talking about just before, you know, is having the low self-esteem and, you know, the self-doubt, all that stuff. I had that stuff from the get-go. From my earliest memories, I was just that kind of kid where I just like, was always fearful, you know, obviously fearful to talk to girls, you know, just always had this voice inside my head that was just doubting me, you know, I was never good enough. And it was, it was crazy about it. And I know that I was just insane from a young age because I was good at everything that I did. Yeah. Right. So I was this kid who felt so, like such shit about myself, but yet like I was, you know, having really good success in sports and I was like, had a reputation for being, you know, one of the best. And, and it was always this like, internally it was always such a struggle for me as a kid you know because I and one you know on one hand I, I was like I knew I was good I knew I was like really good at stuff and then at the same time there was always just this voice just beating me down you know this like demon inside me and you know at a really young age I found you know drugs and alcohol and let me tell you it just silenced the noise huh. right it's like for the first time it like just silenced that voice like those fears went away, those insecurities, like I could, I could be who I thought I was supposed to be, you know, when I was high and drinking. And it just started super young for me. It was just my path, like around 11, 12 years old is when I discovered it. I mean, I was already getting in a lot of trouble. Um, and I, I think the first time I got suspended from school was when I was nine years old. Jeez. And you know, I was just, I was a bad kid, you know, it's funny, like, like I didn't necessarily run with the bad crowd because I was the bad crowd. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? Like I, I was one of those kids that kind of like originated the bad crowd. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, su super young did that. And like I said, it um, drugs and alcohol fixed, you know, f or filled the hole that I had inside me uh, that I had in my spirit and in my soul. And hmm. I chased that, like that high that I got that freedom from the, you know, that, that voice in my head telling me I sucked, I wasn't good enough and always being afraid of everything, you know, it just, you know, it, it took that away um, a bunch of times. And so I just lived in this perpetual state of like chasing that freedom and that release. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, drugs and alcohol and addiction runs in my family. And, you know, uh, by the time I was 15, I was into some pretty heavy stuff. I mean, I was, you know, doing Oxycontin on a large scale. I mean, cocaine, LSD, mushrooms. I mean, the list goes on and on. And it was something that I was doing every day by the time wow. I was 15. Jeez. And it's, some, it's something I searched for every day. And you know, I can remember my high school years, like every day I woke up, man, the second it was like, all right, who am I going to get something from? You know, who can I contact to get pills and, and this and that? Like, that was just it just became an obsession, you know, and, and thing that I feel, felt like I needed. And, um, you know, I had some, some big trouble throughout high school, you know, I've been suspended, you know, a million times. I can't even tell you the amount of times I've been suspended. Cops called on me. Um, and it was like that at home too. Like, wow. you know, like my brother was also heavy into stuff. So, you know, here we had like a single mom, who was working her ass off and she had two freaking out of control boys just getting in so much trouble and, and just, you know, cops are called to the house so many times. It was just, it was a crazy life, you know, it was crazy mm -hmm. life. And, you know, we kind of fast forward a bit by the time I was 20, you know, I just reached a place where, you know, I was smoking crack. I was selling drugs. I was putting such large amounts of substances into my body. Wow. It's, but like it's funny like like when i got sober my mom's a nurse and when i got sober i, to I told my mom the amount what of, of substances i was putting in my body on a regular basis and she literally she's a nurse she was like there's there's no way you were doing that wow and i was like no you know that's that's how i live like that's how me and my friends live like we were just like crazy kids like 
and we just did a lot of crazy stuff. Did she know? Yeah, yeah. At the Absolutely. time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like she knew. She didn't. She didn't know the extent of it, but yeah. she she knew. Um, and so yeah, by the time I was twenty, I was completely unemployable. I was a actually a tattoo artist at the time, and I I remember the point where I just I just like lost control. I just like lost. Uh, like I just had to get high 24 hours a day Jeez. and I, I stopped showing up for work at this wow. point. I was, I was living out of my car. So I had all my belongings in my trunk. I was sleeping wow. on, sleeping on friends' couches and it's kind of couch surfing. And, and the last, the last two and a half months of my drinking and drugging was just out of control. Like how I lived through that is just, it's beyond me. <laughs> wow. I mean, and the amount of times I woke up out of a blackout, being in a different place, I haven't driven my car, you know, oh, wow. just, just craziness, man. Like I became that guy that no one wanted to be around. You know, I was, uh, you know, stealing from everybody in my past just to keep getting wow. high. And, you know, I, I finally, thankfully hit a bottom where <laughs> amongst or amidst all this, I just had a moment of grace, you know, a moment of clarity, whatever you want to call it, where I just couldn't take it anymore crazy and i was just like i'm gonna die like i'm gonna die doing this and it's something that i felt too like i i felt this impending doom every wow. day for like two and a half months there's just this feeling in my gut like i'm gonna die like i'm <laughs> gonna die but but i couldn't stop you know and that's the, the craziness with addiction you know unless you're an addict yourself or or have family like it's it's hard to understand you know it's like hey why don't you just stop it's like no i just i couldn't i couldn't it just it takes over your life and it took over mine and uh, so yeah and i had that, that moment of clarity and i had that desperation you know and in sobriety you know people will say you know you were given the gift of desperation right yeah it's, it's true i was given that gift where i became desperate enough that i was like i have to get help i have to get help and i and i did i called my father and you know, I told him what was going on and, you know, before I knew it, I was, I was in a rehab, you know, here I was 20, I was, I was like 20 and a half when I walked into the rehab. Um, so this was back in November of 2005 and yeah, you know, that's really where my life began. You know, I walked to that rehab, I knew I had to be there and yet there was still this fight in me, you know, I was a young kid, you know, to, to just leave it all behind, leave behind your friends and just get sober is like what a tall task right what a daunting wow. task so but honestly that's that's where my life began november of 2005 you know when i walked to that rehab my life began. Yeah. and and jay where was your dad the whole time like was he he was obviously around but you just weren't spending any time with him or seeing him or how did it work so actually so my mom threw me out, out of the house when i right after i graduated high school i was in i was doing a tremendous amount of cocaine and i was just in really bad shape and my mom finally had enough and she threw me out she said you can't live here anymore and my dad let me come live with him so actually so from about 18 to 20 i was living with my dad and my dad's a tattoo artist so my dad kind of taught me the trade and i started doing tattoos and working for him so i was actually living with him while all this was going on, um, and I was doing crazy stuff. I was, man, I can't even repeat some of the things I was doing, you know, at that time, probably on camera like this, but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Just turn so, to your side. Like that yeah. Right. Well. <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I was working for him. So when I, when I mentioned that the last two and a half months, I couldn't go to work anymore. I just vanished. Jeez. And so, so yeah, my dad was just kind of—he probably didn't know what the hell was going on for for a while, you know. Wow. But, but but how were you operating? Like, I mean, going to school, uh, you know, on coke and all this other stuff. Like, how do you? I mean, how do you sort of study? How do the teachers not know what's going on? Or you know, you just uh, well, I'm sure teachers did. I mean, again, I got in so much trouble. Um, I got you know, I got suspended so often. I never went to class. Uh, so I actually almost, I almost failed out of high school. So junior year, they were like, you're, you're literally not even going to graduate. So my senior year of high school, I literally, you know, most seniors, 
you know, they have a ton of free periods and they get to just kind of chill. And mm. I had like nine periods of like, I had like three gym classes. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I was just trying to make up and I actually graduated. So I, I think the number was like 20 and a half credits you needed to graduate. And I had 20 and a half credits. <laughs> wow. I just barely made it. Wow. So, so there's a few things that we wanted to like, obviously with your mom, like she must be quite a strong lady, you know, like having looking after the boys was your, was your brother like a, on the straight and narrow? Or was he also like a, like a naughty kid or like, how did that, how was the family situation with, uh, with your mom? Yeah. So he, he was, he was the same as me and he was a little bit different, different personalities, but yeah, he was getting in a ton, a ton of trouble. just like myself. And wow. Yeah, my mom is a, an incredible, incredible human being, you know, to endure all of that as a single mom and not freaking lose her mind. Yeah. Or just give us away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's pretty, pretty amazing. But, um, and, my, and again, my mom's been a nurse her whole life. So she's, um, she's actually a hospice nurse okay. at, this, at this point in her life. So she's a, she's a very special human yeah. being, you know, that's able to really be there for people and care for people on a level that, most don't even understand totally so have you had to like mend that relationship over time or was it she always just so loving and you know never kind of sort of let you go or how did that work yeah so you know amidst all the trouble you know for for her it was just like me being sober was was the amends you know like i remember when i first kind of approached her Cause I got into a 12 step program when I got sober and I remember when I first approached her to kind of make an official amends, you know, like, I'm so sorry for all the stuff I did, you know, her reaction was just, you know, just, just keep staying sober. <laughs> yeah. and, and, that, and that's enough, you know, that's, that's the amends. Biggest so, gift. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what I've done. Oh, wow. So, so the, the moment you, I mean, talk us through the, like the moments before you actually decided like rehab is the thing. Like, had you, had you thought about other options? Like maybe you'll, I don't know, run away or you'll go do this or do that. Like, why did you choose rehab or, and, and that like, what is the thought process happening leading up to that point? It was interesting. I didn't, my parents were, were both um, in, in recovery for a number of years so I kind of grew up as a little kid, kind of around sobriety. Mm. Uh, and But for some reason, I never, never once, amidst all the madness, all the drugs, I never once thought about ever getting sober. It, it just, the thought never crossed my mind. So I don't know, I don't know, leading up to it, there was no, there was no like thought that I can remember of like, okay, I need to like, I need to get help and go somewhere. And it was just, it felt like it just kind of like happened all at one time. It's just like Dang. wherever I need to go, just take me away right now. Cause I just <laughs> can't, I can't do it. So that's kind of, I think, I think my dad kind of offered up the idea of a rehab and that kind of thing. Wow. So I think that's how that, that kind of came to play. And were you ever like violent at all? Like, or were you just kind of out of it most of the time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's definitely, I was definitely violent at times, definitely, um, you know, growing up, you know, suicidal at times. Hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, it was generally, honestly, like the, the, the worst times of my life were when I was coming off of drugs. Okay. You know? So, you know, I was definitely had my issues of course, when I was on drugs and, and had a lot of problems, but it was coming off and like dealing with the withdrawal and, uh, you know, not having any more or running out of a particular substance that I, that I needed to have. That's when I, I tend to be at my worst, you know? So yeah, I was always a kid. I always picked fights as a kid. I was always kind of a kid that fought and, you know, used, used my fists and that kind of thing to, mm-hmm. to, to try to solve problems or express yeah. my anger, you know? Yeah. 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 And, 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 so before we like get onto the, the recovery part, you, you mentioned earlier on about, you know, that little voice that always like was fearful and what, do, do you like have any idea sort of why it was there or, you know, now that looking back on it? No, you know, yeah. that's the thing too, is that, you know, a lot of us will say that we're shaped by our environment, 
And, mm. you know, I look back at my life and there's nothing, my, my mom was always such a loving person. Like there was never a time where my mom was like, you're not good enough mm. or, mm. you know, never, it just never happened. So I just don't know, you know, I believe that I was born with a disease of alcoholism, you know, it's like before, mm. way before I even like picked up a drink or a drug, you know, I was just wired a certain wow. way, you know, so I don't know. I don't think, I don't think it was my environment that shaped that part of me. I think it was just, there's certain things about us, you know, as individuals, as human beings that are just kind of there. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was the case with this. Yeah. We hold a lot of stuff from previous generations that we don't even, uh, even realize, I suppose as well, you know, and, uh, that's pretty, it's pretty scary thought to think of sometimes, you know, but, um, t talk us through, uh, a come down. What, what? Tell us more about that. What do you mean exactly? If you come down of drugs, like what? What does that mean? Like how? How do you feel? What sure. do you? What do you go through? Yeah. So I mean, depending on what drug it was, you know, a lot of the time it was just severe depression. I mean, I can remember times coming off of. There was a time in my life I did a lot of ecstasy and a lot of those kind of drugs, and coming off those drugs, the depression and the suicidal thoughts was just out of control man. like i'll never forget that like some of that stuff like i'm lucky i didn't do it i didn't i didn't you know take myself mm -hmm. out man i mean because it's just the it's hard to explain unless you've kind of gone through it man it's just severe depression it's just uh it's crazy you know these these drugs out there i mean even like drugs like adderall and stuff like that like i've i've abused pretty much everything under the sun and even some of those drugs man yeah. We're giving our kids and stuff, man. If you abuse that stuff to a certain level, that stuff just destroying your mind, you know, and destroying your emotions. It's uh, it's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Do Do you find like you have a, a lot of sympathy for you know kids that might sort of be going through what you went through? Yeah, one hundred percent. I can obviously can can connect to it, and um, you know, I've had a lot of maybe not a lot, but I've had a few parents you know, obviously know that I'm, that I'm sober and, and they've always kind of looked at to me like, Hey, can you, can you talk to my, my son or whatever he's having trouble and he's 14 or 15. And, um, yeah, you know, there's definitely some sympathy. Un unfortunately, I mean, I've always been somewhat willing to speak to the kid, but unfortunately mm. we have to live mm. life a bit, you know, and especially at that age, like, if someone were to come and talk to me at 15 and been like, Hey, you know, yeah. you should, I would have been like, fuck you. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, of course there's sympathy at the same time, you know, we need to live through, through the pain, you know, especially yeah. when it, specifically talking about drugs and, and addiction and that kind of thing. You got to live through it a bit to, to really understand, you know, how bad it can get. And, uh, yeah. But the, so. the cool thing is that you, you're, if by talking about these things, there'll be some kid that's gone through what you've been through and is at that moment of like coming through something like that themselves, but at least then they might come across a story like yours and then you, it will be like the right place at the right time for some people, you know? And, and I think that's um, why it's so important to, to actually discuss these kind of things, like just have open discussions. Like this happens, you know, there are, the kids that go through this all the time everywhere. And, um, and I think, like you say, there's that going to be that moment where something switches and they'll find you somehow. And, and that's where it's cool. You know, just by leading by example, you don't necessarily have to go lecture anyone, but you're still there, still open about it. And I think that's, you know, that's probably where the magic happens for some people, you know? Yeah. And that's why I think it's so important to, you know, in some scenarios, I know as people can't be super open and let's say they're in recovery, you know, whether it be mm. their career, you know, sometimes it doesn't, doesn't work where you can just mm. kind of tell the truth about everything, you know, but I'm particularly fortunate that, you know, I'm in a position where I can be completely open about my past mm. and what I went through. And it's, it's not hindering me, you know, as a person or as I hindering my brand, if anything, it's only elevating Mm. me you know in that regard but also it's like yeah man you never know you know who's who's hearing your story you never know yeah. what thing what thing you might say right that just mm. sticks in someone's brain and maybe 10 years from now mm. right they just they just they recall it without even yeah. knowing it you know 
so it's I mean what a what a gift it is for me to be able to have a platform just to kind of share it you know yeah. and um you know maybe maybe people are judging me for it and maybe it's helping somebody you know who knows but even if you only help one person right I and mean, that's yeah it's cl- cliche but you know it's true <laughs> it's totally, it, but you know, so. Yeah. Yes. If you can help one person that's, you know, and everyone in the world did that, then we kind of sort it in a way, you know, but uh, it's, do do you ever count yourself kind of lucky for having that moment of clarity? And because I'm sure like lots of people never actually get out of, you know, the sort of addiction part of it. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Uh, You know, for, for a long time in sobriety, you know, I, I would kind of, questioned it all right this like super yeah. ex- existential like why why did i get this like what why why me mm. like like what have i done that's special that like not only do i get sober but then you know got into fitness and started an instagram account and da, 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 and like here i am today you know like how like how and why you know did yeah. not it's not someone else get this you know, why me? Yeah. And and I don't know, you know what I mean? There, again, there was a time where I questioned that a lot and it would uh, really deeply affect me. Now it doesn't. Now it's just kind of like, I might think about it, but it's like, Hey, this is just what it is today. And I got to do my best to try to carry the message of, of hope to other people as, as best I can. Yeah, absolutely. But, and, and so, so if you like, you know, the, the recovery part, you said that was like probably the toughest of all of it. Uh, like how and why and what was the sort of process? How long did it take? I mean, it must, I can only imagine it must be terrible trying to get over it and deal with the downers and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, there's definitely that initial physical battle you go through, right? It's kind of detoxing off of everything. And, um, but then pretty quickly, you know, you, I mean, for me and in, in my path is that I realized, you know, I kind of had this thought going into sobriety or, or getting out of rehab that, you know, since I put down all the drugs and the drinking that I would just be fixed. Mm. That I would just be better. And I really quickly realized that was not the case at all. And if anything, I was worse. Mm. You know, I probably felt worse in the beginning because here I am, you know, without any escape any crutch to deal with my emotions right so it's like there's this period of being just completely raw and like fuck like what what am i supposed to do now Mm. and that's why it was so important for me to get into a 12-step program because you know once you have that realization of like okay this is not just about the drugs and alcohol is putting my system there's really right the, the thing i talked about before the drugs and alcohol was the fear, right? Mm-hmm. The low self-esteem. These are the things. This, this yeah. is the problem, right? It's yeah. like my my spirit, you know, that hole in my soul. That's the issue, right? So I need to address that issue. And so yeah, you know, as a twenty-year-old kid, kind of coming to mm-hmm. that realization, and then like trying to start like working on myself, and kind of leave that life behind of like hanging out with friends and you know all that stuff was yeah. very challenging. You know, and it wasn't until probably about a year, year and a half of sobriety where I just kind of grown up a little bit where I finally kind of reached a place of, you know what, if, if leaving behind my friends and all that stuff is what I need to do to continue to be sober and live a better life, then I'm ready to do it. Hmm. You know, so like that first year, year and a half was a bit of a battle. Um, once I kind of reached the point, and don't get me wrong, it was still a battle for a number of years, but it became less of a battle once I reached that point of, you know what, this is what I got to do, you know, and I got to work on myself. I got to grow as a person and grow spiritually in order to, to be happy. Hmm. Wow. And you talk about growth in terms of spirituality and uh, physical growth as well. You were, um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to come back to the spirituality side of it, but you were, I mean, you were not a gym person at that stage. Am I right? You you were like 65 kilograms, 145 pounds. Yeah. You were like, you're not in good shape. Is that right? That is correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was, you know, smoking a pack and a half a day when I first wow. got sober, 
you know, I had not done physical activity. I can't even remember, honestly. Like, I quit, I quit all sports when I was a freshman in high school. So that was when I stopped playing. I was like, F everybody, and I'm just going to party hard. And so, yeah, I had not done anything for a long time. So, yeah, the initial getting into fitness and, and that kind of thing and, you know, quitting smoking, all that stuff, that was tough. That was tough, and it took me a while to really get into it. <laughs> And you spoke just now about like, you know, saying sort of like or closing off some of those relationships that you had before, like did any of those guys or girls sort of also go down the sort of path of recovery or they, and are you still ever in contact with any of them to this day? Yeah. So a couple of them got sober, you know, by the grace of some, some power out there, you know, a good buddy of mine got sober and he's been sober, I think almost, almost 10 years, uh, another another running buddy of mine i think's been sober for a long time you know he's married wow. he has a kid and he's doing well uh and unfortunately some of them did not do so well and you know i got one buddy who's been in and out of jail for since he's been 20 years old hmm. and uh, wow. you know another buddy like my my friend's dad that i told you guys about he he unfortunately passed away in a in a car accident um some years ago and so yeah you know some some didn't make it and and some made it so sure. yeah. and were you making new friends and new um relationships along this way or like like conscientiously or was it just the environment that you're in now you're making new new connections yes yeah, so that's one of the great things about you know Tulsa program is that there's just a ton of fellowship right and you meet people that are all trying to do the same thing as you you know get better get sober stay sober and yeah, I was fortunate over the years to, to meet a lot of different people and make some good friends and um, yeah, and kind of really establish a sober life, right? That's just, that's a tough thing to do at first. It's like, yeah. right, I kind of talked about that already a little bit, but transitioning to that life of an active drug user, especially as a kid to like a, just a sober, <laughs> you know, PG yeah. kind of life, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah wow and you've um, lost some of your identity i guess yeah yeah absolutely yeah there's definitely fear in that too like who who am i going to be now yeah right who am i yeah yeah huh, that's crazy oh, yeah. man jeez no no that's fine um so so can you just tell me a bit about like what a 12 st- a step program is like i mean i know it's you know i mean i know obviously everyone kind of goes through but what are the actual details of it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people think, or at least I've heard people think it's, it's a cult, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that kind of thing. Right. I think that gets thrown around a bit. Uh, and it, I don't think it is, you know, ultimately a 12 step program, it's foundation or, or 12 steps to living. Right. You know, and I'm not going to go through all the, the 12 yeah. steps, but basically, yeah. you know, ultimately, um, people that are spiritual or living in a spiritual way are kind of, kind of doing what a 12 step program is doing right it's all about you know um being aware of our shortcomings and, and, and things that are um are kind of our defects of character and, and learning how to be aware of those things and change those things right it's about um when we make mistakes like promptly you know trying to uh, amend those mistakes you know and um and, and try to just hopefully continue a path of growth and that maybe not making the mistakes we used to make, right? So, I mean, for, for so long, you know, I lived in these cyclical patterns in my relationships, particularly, right, of um, uh, overreacting, you know, being too sensitive, right? All these different things that kind of caused me to, to drink and drug, kind of caused me and fueled me to, like, need an escape, right? And yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, you know, becoming aware of those things is essential, you know, to, to kind of getting past and recovering, as some would say, um, from the disease of, of addiction, you know? So ultimately it's kind of, it's kind of what we're doing in 12 step program. It's like, we're, mm-hmm. we're definitely trying to kind of realize and become aware of a lot of things. And then ultimately at the end of the day, you know, when we've kind of come out of that fog and we've found and started to really make some change in our lives, then like when we've been given that gift, of sobriety and, and experience change, then it is our job to return the favor, you know, and, and push that forward and try and help someone else the same way that someone okay. else helped us, you know? 
Um, yeah that's cool and is is this something you still like go to weekly sort of um yeah yeah Yeah, i do do still go yeah i'm still in contact with it i think it's important you know i don't go as much yeah but it is important to keep that connection you know because Mm. one of the things with with the disease of addiction and alcoholism is that without that connection to what it used to be like and how bad it was it can be very easy over time to completely Mm. forget you know what we used to be like you know how bad Mm. we were and how quickly it can take our lives from us. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's, that's a huge part of it. And it's also important to, to give it back, you know, like how lucky am I huh. to live mm-hmm. the life I live? You know, it's a, I had an old friend of mine tell me, you know, in earlier sobriety, he was like, Hey man, he's like, dude, if, if this pro- program like, gives you a good life, you know, and you don't give it back to others, then you're a thief, huh. you know? And it's something that I've always loved that. That mm. saying, and we can use that even outside of, of a twelve step program, right? It's like sure. it's so important for us to give that stuff back that we've been given, you know, to keep that that flow of the universe going, you know. Totally, totally couldn't agree more with that. Eh? Like, just you know, being not just a taker, but also a bit of a giver. You know, you've had your chance to take a bit, and if you've got the opportunity, we should most certainly be giving more. What do you do these days to work on your spirituality? I, I know you do some meditation and that kind of thing um i presume uh you're working out and that is some form of like you know getting in the zone mentally and stuff what kind of stuff or growth do you or steps towards growth in your spirituality do you take these days yeah you know i do a little meditation i find meditation to be difficult for me and i'm sure it is for a lot of people like the idea of sitting down and just being quiet and having this like set time to connect to the universe or whatever we believe in um, it's challenging at times. I do try to do it every morning, at least even if it's for a minute, uh, uh, if I can even enter a space that is quiet in my mind just for a minute and just kind of count my blessings, I find that to be a, a great way to kind of start my day. Um, I've also found that what I've been doing a lot lately is, is listening to music. So uh, a particular song that I really love and connect to is the song Society by Eddie Vedder yeah um, oh, great song yeah I love that song man i just love the message the, the feel yeah. of the song. and it just helps me for whatever reason helps me kind of connect to something greater than myself and oh, so cool so i like to just throw that on and just kind of like get quiet man and just just kind of breathe and just man just really recognize how good life is you know wow. um and you know what beyond that um i talked about this recently with with some people um It's so important, I think, to break away from this, and this is just for me, uh, break away from this like set time where we like light candles, right? And fucking meditate. It's so (laughs) important to like create like a conscious stream of gratitude Mm, in in kind of meditation. So like most of my, you know, gratitude and like prayer and it comes throughout my day. It's not really in that moment, you know, that I set aside in the morning. It's like throughout my day, there's just like, tons and tons of moments where i'm like damn my life is so good like thank you thank you to whatever (laughs) you know for giving me this life and just living in that space has changed my life um drastically you know so it's not like this like oh like sitting with candles that it's like really this like more subtle yeah space that i feel like we all will benefit so much in living in of like whether you know some people got it tough man there are people out there that have rough lives 100 percent. but i gotta imagine even for them they can you know step aside from, from some of the stuff they're going through and look at some things in their life that are that are great you know so it's important to try and and do that and, and we all know that that can be really challenging at times yeah. but you know we gotta we gotta work at it right we gotta keep trying so yeah yeah i think that's important like the message is like life is tough uh, we're kind of all in it together. We all have our tough moments, but we need to find the good stuff and we need to be grateful. You know, at the end of the day, we are alive and we have choices, you know, Mm. even if you are down, like in your life is really bad, you know, like how yours was, you still had a choice, bud. And you, you know, you somehow picked yourself up and you, you put yourself, um, in recovery and, you know, uh that, that's that when you're alive you have that choice and that's important yeah yeah 100%, man. yeah so and so, i like what you're yeah. saying sorry just about 
integrating it into your very fabric of your being, the gratitude and the not, not making it's less contrived. It's, and, and I think that's such a cool, like, I really like the way you put it, you know, like just, you don't have to have this moment where you've put it in your diary. It's mm. just like, yeah. you can just be in, going about your day and just be like, wow, like I'm having a moment now just to be grateful. And I think that's a cool message. Seriously. Yeah. Sorry you know, it, it really, it really keeps you connected right to whatever you believe in, like the power of the universe, like having that, like the more connected we can be to that. Right. I mean, the better yeah. we're going to feel the, the better we're going to be able to help somebody else. You know, the, the we're going to be more useful, right? All these yeah. different things, you know, and, and certainly I fall short, you know, I'm definitely no, uh, sure. no master at this, but you know, a lot of my days, you know, as a result of kind of living this way for as long as I have, um, are really good, you know, really yeah. good. It's funny. I was thinking about this and talking about it with someone recently. I honestly can't remember the last time I had a bad day, huh. wow. like an actual bad day, you know, where I was like, Oh, fuck this day sucked man <laughs> yeah like, yeah honestly like it's probably been like i don't know seven eight years since i've even ever even felt that way uh -huh. you know? and like that's that's crazy and that's no like it's no testament to like me or anything it's just like that's what's possible i think yeah through living you know a spiritual life and trying to grow and change and be the best we can be you know like that's kind of a byproduct of that you know and that's yes that's freaking what a gift that is right wow what a gift yeah. and just briefly like you're talking about the universe jay um this it's so interesting because last week i was um listening to that eddie better soundtrack of into the wild nice. uh, and that's one of the songs right and yeah. then one of my other mates who's been on the podcast one of our mates gareth pickering he actually we were chatting and he was like mate if you haven't you should listen to the soundtrack uh, and, uh, you know, and watch the movie if you haven't, I was like, Oh, I was listening to it this week and now you brought that song up again. <laughs> it's like so weird how these things, you know, happen yeah. in the universe. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's such beautiful soundtrack, man. Like that music is just, man, he just, he killed that. So good. Wow. It's just, yeah. What a, oh, just eerie, like just the way he can like get the emotions going with his voice is incredible. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. And, 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 and is there any other type of music that you love? Are you like a bit of a music type person? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a music person, man. That's like one of the things I do in my free time. I love seeing live music and, you know, I'm, I guess maybe this cliche, of just, I kind of like everything. Yeah. Um, except yeah. for country. Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> You're on the same team. Damn, I love country. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I just can't, for some reason I just can't connect to country. Yeah, like, I'm not against it because I love a lot of different kinds of music. Yeah. You know? But I just, for some reason I can't connect to it and I just don't like it. But, but uh, yeah, I, lo I love music. You know, Pink Floyd is one of my favorite groups. Yeah, I mean, awesome. all, all, all my tattoos on my arm are all Pink Floyd and music related. And, awesome. Uh, yeah, you know, I go from Pink Floyd to, to James Taylor to, to, to Bob Marley and mm. then go to, then I go to some like pretty serious metal, <laughs> you know, <laughs> angry, you know, rage against machine, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have kind of a wide, wide variety. And, and, and do you work out to the more hardcore stuff or do you also sort of work out to say a bit of Pink Floyd? Oh, um, it depends. <laughs> Sometimes I'll go, I'll go just, you know what? It doesn't matter what kind of music I'm listening to. I'm just yeah. like, right, just do what I got to do. And, and other times, yeah, for sure. You know, I need to, you need to connect to something, man, to get pumped yeah. up, whether it be some just like hard, <laughs> hard rap or, you know, whatever. Yeah, 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 definitely. No, I, I used to, I used to hit the gym really hard as well, and um, I was, I went through these different stages. Mostly, it was like dance music, then a little bit of like sort of soft rock, like old school Offspring, Green Day sort of stuff, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes I would listen to like Dire Straits, and I would really just get in this weird zone, <laughs> nice. <laughs> like lifting weights. It was so strange. <laughs> yeah, awesome. dire, dire Straits is awesome, man. They're great. Yeah, great yeah, band. I think. I think everyone should have like a, a, a playlist of like power tracks, you know, like it's just incredible how music can switch your mood and like help you get into the zone, you know, like it's so cool. That I love yeah, that. It is. It's amazing. I saw that your, one of your first um, albums or m music that you listened to was Green Day Dookie. And it's funny because that was literally one of my first ones as well. We, I think we are similar age. So it's like the yeah. music was, you know, like Def Rage Against Machine, Tool, yeah. all those kind of yeah, bands, yeah. but like, 
and there's there were so many good obviously everyone says that with their age group but there were some right. really good bands at, the, at that stage <laughs> yeah i really think our era i mean i don't know how old you are i'm 33 yeah. how old are you i'm, I'm 35 okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm 37, so all this was the same roundabout. Yeah, okay, yeah. same generation. I mean, I really think I really think our generation, like early '90s, yeah, you yeah. know, to like 2000, was pretty special, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What was the first? What was the first uh, like like track or record or CD or tape or whatever you bought? So the first the first CD I ever got, I got it with a CD player for Christmas. And I got Green Day Dookie. So that was <laughs> the very first CD. So yeah, I was into all that kind of stuff, man. Like Green Day, Limp Biscuit, Corn. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah Corn. <laughs> <laughs> like all those groups Love growing it. up when I was real young. I used to like dye my hair, you know, <laughs> like a punk, you know. So. Whatever happened to you? What's his name? Fred Durst. Hey, We're like, I don't know, um, man. I have no idea. Geez. I'm pretty sure like probably the last time they, they were together was probably like Woodstock, like one of the. Yeah. Um, the 90s Woodstock or 2000s, yeah. <laughs> Craig, what was your, Craig, what was your uh, first? Um, well, that was the first one that I, I actually got given Green Day Rookie uh, at, and I listened to that like just on repeat for like weeks. And then the first one I ever bought for myself was um, uh, Silver Chair. Uh, yeah, dude, I love Silver Chair, man. Yeah, Frog me stuff. too, man. <laughs> yeah, Frog Stuff. That was the yeah. album that I bought. I like dude. saved up. I bought. I went and I still remember buying the CD, and I was like, "That was a freaking sick, uh, sick album as well, man." <laughs> and they're Australian. Like, how I cool is that? Say, yeah, they're Aussies, man. <laughs> yeah, and you, Gareth? Uh, I'm gonna really, uh, you know, embarrass myself and sort of. Uh, <laughs> you guys are gonna look down on me, but my my my. I bought my first tape, and it was uh, Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. It was, was when his uh, song "Achy Breaky Heart" came out. So oh my like, god! It had, I, I think it had like three mixes of "Achy Breaky Heart," and I just <laughs> to play it, but on repeat. Oh, that's nice. so funny, but, uh, <laughs> that's so good. Oh, nothing, man. nothing to be ashamed of, Gareth. Yeah, thank you. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool, man. man. So, so, but um, you know, moving on like a, a little bit. So, talk us through, you know, your steps into sort of starting uh, fitness and how that helped you sort of you know just recover and come onto the path that you are now yeah sure you know i um yeah man it's been a while it's been a while so i really kind of kind of really thought about that space i was in when i first started in, in fitness but yeah you know i knew i needed something to do you know i need, needed something i was always an athlete as a kid like i told you guys about so i don't know it just kind of came to me like all right i need to I need to do something, you know, and I actually got into karate Cool. Um, when I first got sober and, you know, I joined Planet Fitness and yeah, I just kind of started there. And you know, I can remember actually looking in the mirror at Planet Fitness and having like no definition, no abs and like thinking to myself, like, when, when am I going to like, get, <laughs> you know, like, fit, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, you know, that kind of continued for a little while. I did the, <laughs> did the martial arts. I really enjoyed it. And I started to kind of get sick of the karate. I just didn't have the, the right mindset for doing all the forms and all that stuff. And I wanted to do something a little more extreme and something where you kind of hit a little bit more. So I got into MMA and I started doing Muay Thai kickboxing and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You know, still going to the gym a bit. And so I uh, got into that, got really into that and, um, you know, trained for, for two uh, small Muay Thai fights, like amateur Muay Thai fights. And did that and had a really good time with that a really cool experience and around that time i was asked to be an instructor at the dojo that i was uh, working out at and training at and i became a teacher so that's how i really got started as far as like the career side of things um and i remember actually the guy asking me to teach and i immediately turned it down okay wow. immediately you know like i always love telling this story because it's such a it's such a cool thing to think about who who i was right i was still at this time, like this scared kid. And wow. I remember thinking to myself when he asked me, you know, I was like, there's, I'm not a teacher. Like right. there's, there's no way that I can do that. Yeah. Right. And I remember talking to some friends and I was telling them about the situation. They were like, dude, what are you afraid of, man? And it sounds a little silly, but for whatever reason in that moment, and that person, that friend of mine that looked me dead in the soul and was like, dude, what are you afraid of? Yeah. It like really hit me. And I, I went, went back to this to this guy and I took the opportunity 
And I remember I just did it and I was freaking terrified, right? Just wow. terrified to do it, you know, and, and just kind of work through it, you know, and, and as time has gone on, it got, it got more and more comfortable. Um, while I was training for some Muay Thai fights, I discovered CrossFit. So uh, someone told me, hey, man, you know, you want to really take your conditioning to the next level. You got to try this CrossFit stuff. And I was like, all right, yeah, let's, let's try it. And I remember <laughs> I, I went to this CrossFit gym in Stanford, Connecticut. And the, fir- and the, the workout of the day, listen to this, was <laughs> it was a quarter mile. So let me try to explain this. It makes sense. It was a quarter, <laughs> was a quarter mile lunge walk, right? So it was a partner workout. Ooh, what? So one person, so we had 35 pound dumbbells in each hand. One person had to start doing lunge walks, right? So it was a quarter mile. Um, sure. So you being the partner, yeah. you also do lunge walks without any weight. So you're both lunge walking, Ooh. one person with weights, one person without. As soon as the person with weights can't lunge walk any further, the person without the weights <laughs> grabs the <laughs> weights so and you guys <laughs> just switch off. And you did that for a wow. quarter mile. Wow. Right? And I remember – Finishing that workout, I remember my legs were sore for like a week, and I, yeah. I, never, I never felt that sore in my life. And I was like, "Wow, dude, that was fucking awesome! <laughs> like that was really cool. Like I thought I was in decent shape, and like, wow, there's like this whole other level, right? Yeah. Wow, fit. So that's when I started yes. getting into that stuff, and really got hooked on that. And you know, I remember when I started out, I could deadlift like 300 pounds for like one or two reps, and um, you know, I, I had like no strength. I was like 100, and, you know. I think when I was fighting, I was like 160 pounds. So, mm. you know, I was pretty, pretty thin and whatever. I just got into that and, you know, I got better and better. I got stronger. And while I was training for, so I'd done a couple CrossFit competitions and I gotten like close to doing well, but just couldn't quite get there. And I remember being so determined to, to win something, right? I just like mm. had to do it. It was like this, this prophecy I had to fulfill. And so I trained for this competition. It was a small competition, but there were some pretty, pretty beastly dudes in it and did the competition and laid it all out on the line. And fortunately I won by like wow. a small amount, you know, I barely beat this one guy, but <laughs> you know, when I won, I was like, yes, you know, I yes. freaking did it, you know? And, wow. and after that competition, I wasn't, I just wasn't feeling right at all. And yeah couldn't put my finger on it. And I remember people just kind of, people that are close to me in my life, you'd be like, Hey, you know, you might be exaggerating a little bit. And, yeah. um, you know, you're probably, you know, you're probably fine. And, you know, I kind of believed them, even though deep down I was like, something's really wrong. And, you know, you fast forward two weeks, you know, I lost like 15 pounds. Um, my vision started to get blurry. I started to get disoriented. I was urinating like an insane amount. Huh. And, Finally, I had a client who was a doctor, and I told him what was going on. He's like, hey, man, you should just go to the, the, the hospital and just get checked out. You're, you're probably fine, but just, just get some fluids or something. I was like, okay, yeah, that's what I'll do. So that was March, uh, March 11th of 2013, and I drove myself to the hospital, and, and my whole entire life, man, just, just freaking changed. And you know, I was diagnosed with, with type 1 diabetes. And, wow. Um, yeah, it was just, just a, definitely a, a curveball, and <laughs> never thought that was going to happen to me. And you know, right around that time, I started uh, an Instagram account, wow. and that's where things that's where things kind of began. You know, I was kind of like I kind of see that as like the end of the first phase of like fitness for me, and then from the diabetes on is kind of like the second phase that I'm still in. You know. <laughs> So this is incredible. Like you've just, you've just come through this massive like shift in your life over the, you know, the previous months and, and years. Uh, and now you get hit down again. Like just when you feel like things are like on the men, did you like, what was the mental state that you're in when you found that out? Did it like knock you really hard? Were you like, did you ever think like, wow, I'll stuff this or like, what's, I don't give a shit anymore. Or what, what did you go through when you found out about it? I definitely struggled at first, you know, it was definitely, um, there was definitely a little bit of like, why me? Why did I get this? You know, and it was also, I didn't really fully know what type one was, you know, I knew Mm -hmm. that type one was a serious life threatening illness, you know, and of course, you know, immediately my mind went to, I'm going to lose my, my vision. I'm going to lose limbs, get older, you know, and there's these legitimate things that can happen, um, down the road. 
so there was a, yeah there was definitely this like acclimation period of, of having it and being okay with it and and ultimately learning to how to manage it because yeah. i don't know if people realize it or not but when you're diagnosed with something like that everything changes like you have to completely relearn everything that you're feeling you know you don't know if your blood sugars are high if they're going low or you know, what to do in each scenario, you know, so there's definitely this like massive, well, at least for me, you know, getting out of the hospital, I was in the hospital for a few days, getting out being like, what the hell do I do now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, I spent, I definitely, I didn't work out for like a little while, you know, maybe like about a month because I was like really afraid and to, if I was going to you know, have hypoglycemia and all this, mm-hmm. all these different things. So yeah, there was, it was a rocky mindset at first, you know, thank God that I had a lot of strong people in my life that kind of just kind of supported me through it. And we're like, dude, like my, my mom was just the best through the whole thing. And wow. I'll never forget this. My mom. So I was in the hospital when I first brought myself there. Uh, my vision was so bad. I could like barely see six <laughs> feet in front of me. And wow. so I remember sitting in that hospital bed and I was, I was crying and I was like, holy shit. Like, is this really happening right now? And then finally, when my, when my mom arrived, pretty quickly we were, we were talking and, and she was like, listen, you, you know, you, you probably don't want to hear this, but you are the best possible person to have this disease. Hmm. And that, that was just like, it's the epitome of my mom, like, pers- wow. like, like perspective, like she just has such perspective and she gave me that, you know, and she reminded me of that constantly when I would forget. Right? When I would start complaining about having it or this sucks about diabetes, you know, she'd be like, man, like, you know, because for me, you know, I got diagnosed as an adult, you know, I was 28 years old. I was, you know, mature, responsible. I was healthy. I was fit, you know. So, yeah, of course, there, there are things that, that suck about it, but a lot of things I was able to kind of acclimate really quickly to, whereas opposed to, you know, there's these little kids that get it and they, they had to go through their whole adolescence. Right, with other kids like eating candy, you know, yeah. just oh, blah, yeah. blah, 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 man. The list goes on and on, man. They also, younger kids, when they become teenagers and they go through puberty, they, they go through tremendous change in their body, their diabetes. It's incredibly hard to manage. Um, you know, for wow. the parents, it's very difficult having a kid with diabetes, you know. And um, so, you know, that being said, you know, it was, there were some challenging times at the beginning, but I think pretty quickly, you know, I realized that, like, okay, you know, I am a very good candidate for this, you know, and, yeah. and ultimately if I'm going to get some freaking bad disease, like I'll take, I'll take this one, you know, because yeah. there, there are much worse, Fair worse enough. ones out there. So. Wow. We've had, so, so can you just explain, like, I guess, just for say the listeners, what type one diabetes actually means? Yeah. So type one diabetes is what's, what happens with type one is that um, pancreas, which um, releases insulin to the body it completely stops working. So there's no more insulin going into your body. So therefore you can't, um, once you start eating food, that kind of thing, sugar or carbs, when it gets broken down, it goes into the bloodstream and insulin can't be released to manage that, that sugar intake, right? Those carbs going into the body to regulate blood sugars. So you have, you just have raging high, you know, blood sugar, right? It's just sugars running through the body and your body can't control it. So um, without insulin, um, eventually you you will you will die from it. Um, without proper medication, uh, you will you will eventually slip into um, hypoglycemia, um, slip into a coma, uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, so type one is your di- your um, your pancreas doesn't work at all, and then type two, which people get got these kind of mixed up. Type two, your body becomes insulin resistant but your body still makes insulin. So it's mm. kind of the difference between the two. Type one so is, known, why, is known to be like the, the worse. Yeah. The worst one. Why, why is a high level of sugar in your blood just for our listeners as well? Like why is that bad? Well, cause it affects all of our, our major organs. I mean, I don't, I don't have like the, the exact science yeah. on it either, but yeah. So it, it affects our brain, affects all of our internal yeah. organs. Um, yeah, so excessive high blood sugars are just just no good for for the body at all. Wow. So you have had to, sorry, even you've had to okay. change like your your whole diet and I guess 
you just have to say no to maybe a lot of foods and things like that? Kind of, you know, so I was already eating healthy, which was good. Um, but you definitely have to start, you have to kind of learn what, what things your body can handle, what it can handle. You got to learn how to properly medicate yourself for the things that you're going to be eating. So, so yeah, that, that period wasn't as challenging for me, you know, cause I knew how to eat well, I knew how to eat healthy, but if you want to manage your diabetes, well, you have to, you have to really, you know, eat healthy and really do this more often, you know, cause the more you eat bad foods, the much harder diabetes gets to handle. I mean, mm. things, things get out of control. I mean, just from, you know, obviously I still eat ice cream. I still, I still splurge on stuff, man. You know, I'm, I'm a human being. I'm always going to do that. But there are times when I do, man, let's say one night of eating ice cream, man, I pay for it for like 24 hours. Really? In, wow. in, in just super high blood sugars. My blood sugars are just out of control. I feel like crap. I mean, you know, so it's, um, it, it can be, it can be challenging in that regard. And at the same time, maybe it's, if you look at it this way, maybe it's more motivation, right? It's like, yeah. it kind of helps me kind of dial it in a little bit more. Like yeah. I, I, I suffer <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. every time I eat something that's bad for the most part. So it's like, all right, let me just, like, I don't want to go through that. So I tend for to sure. just stay on the healthier side. Yeah. You know what? Another universe, like weird universal thing was I got my hair cut uh, on Sunday, two days ago uh, in Australia. And um, anyway, the late, so I said, oh, well, I'm, I'm returning to Jay. And I told her a little about you while I was getting my hair cut. And she's like, oh, well, I'm a type one diabetic. Um, oh, no and yeah. And, and then I was like, oh, this is so cool. So now I'm going to ask you everything about it because so that I know everything about it when I speak to Jay. So, so anyway, then she proceeds to show me her little... Um, insulin pump uh that she can program and i was like this is incredible so anyway um maybe you could tell us a little bit like how do you monitor it and how do you know where your sugar's at besides just listening to your body sure so ultimately you have to be um testing blood sugar so right now i have an insulin pump that it's actually a wireless pump you guys have probably seen it in some of my videos and and pictures and whatnot so what what the pump does so i still have to manage um what insulin is going to my body. Um, what the pump does, the pump stores all the insulin so that I can, I have like a little computer that's a Bluetooth connected to the pump and I can punch in, you know, let's say I'm going to eat 30 grams of carbs. You know, I could punch in, okay, I'm about to eat 30 grams of carbs and I press, you know, hmm. okay. And it gives me the exact amount of insulin that I'll need to cover the amount of carbs that I'm eating to hopefully bring my blood sugars to an even level. So, wow. uh, yeah, it's really amazing. I mean, so you still have to prick your finger and check your blood sugar, um, throughout the day to make sure that you're okay. Um, but even now, so I have a new device. So sometimes the guys will see me with two devices on. So I have a, I have a new device. It's, it's friggin' amazing. It's called a continuous glucose monitor. And what this thing does is that it stays on me for 10 days and it tests my blood sugar automatically every five minutes hmm. uh, it's connected to my iphone so i literally and this thing is accurate man wow it's wow crazy. i literally pull up my iphone and i just see what my, what my blood sugar is Whoa. All and so i barely have to prick my fingers anymore uh which is wow. just amazing you know so that's like another great thing about th this era it's like 30 yeah. years ago you had a you had to pee on a stick and wait yeah. and wait for 30 minutes and get an inaccurate reading you know wow. nowadays it's like, yeah, type one diabetes sucks, but it's like, look at me, man. I got two yeah. devices that freaking do everything for me. <laughs> that's so you know cool. what I mean? Like it's pretty wild. Wow. Cheapers. That's cool. Technology, like, wow, it's really allowing us to sort of, you know, take things forward and, you know, discover new ways of like looking after ourselves. And that's just amazing. I can't believe that, you know, this thing just is so accurate and just tells you it yeah. every five minutes. Yeah. It's, it's sick, man. It's, it's a, it's a life changer, man. So I got this thing like a month ago and it's just totally changed my life. Wow. So, yeah. So what is your, what are the plans of the next while you, you, um, I mean, you're training really hard. Tell us a little bit more about like you, you you've got one of your programs, um, uh, involves like f sort of more the functional side of things. And you were talking earlier that you've moved sort of a little bit away from like, just like hitting the weights only. So, Tell us a little bit about the kinds of training that you're doing at the moment and, and why do you feel like they're like valuable to, to longevity, like you said? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, 
probably about three years ago, right, right when I was about to turn 30, I remember having a conversation with a buddy of mine, you know, I was still, you know, that was at, like my early Instagram days where I was like trying to just like see what my body was capable of, right? So I was just doing crazy shit just <laughs> all the time, you know, deadlifting 500 pounds and then doing backflips, you know, oh. like just silly, <laughs> silly shit, you know? And I was doing that on a regular basis. And, you know, obviously I was making some gains and I was strong and doing some cool stuff. But, you know, I started to reach this point. And I remember talking to my buddy and being like, hey, man, like, when was the point where, like, you felt like your body just wasn't recovering the right way? And he was like, he's like, honestly, dude, probably around like 30, 31. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and I was just having this where I was like living this life of like constant injury, right? Mm, just like wow. constant. And I just started becoming sick and tired of it. I was like, man, I can't live this way. And then, you know, of course, I get the comments like, dude, by the time you're 40, you were going to be screwed. Right? <laughs> and like hearing those things and like there was probably a time, you know, where I'd be like, yeah, yeah. But you know, like, it really started to hit home. Where it's like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Like, how is my body going to handle this Yeah. for another decade? Right. So I started kind of tra uh, changing my training mentality and started to you know, maybe stop lifting quite as heavy and, and started getting into more functional movements and movement patterns and that kind of thing. And sort of like taking care of myself more. And so during this time, I was like, I also love doing everything. You know, you probably see my videos. I love hitting kettlebells. I love doing backflips. I love doing flying pushups. I love lifting heavy. I just love all facets of fitness for the most part. So I was like, how can I, how can I train everything? but do it in a way that like I can actually like sustain it for an extended period of time. Right. So that just started to kind of, it kind of start coming about. I started just kind of like structuring my workouts a little bit differently and, and figuring out kind of like a game plan um, to how I can kind of create that program. Right. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I started doing that. And I, I um, just for like shits and giggles, just kind of released a, a little program online and it did really well and i was like really surprised like wow this is nice. pretty cool right so um yeah that inspired me to like you know continue to to um, you know pro write write more programming get get more involved in it. and um you know as time has gone on i just developed this you know my program's called the functional method i just developed a style of training where i was like okay you know um let me break this down from from monday through saturday and I started just kind of testing this, this style and it was just working really well. It's it getting really good results. And I was like, feeling good, like, feeling much better, not feeling completely run down all the time. It was like all the CrossFit stuff was great, but I mean, it just kicks your ass. It's just mm, a, little yeah. bit, a little bit, a little bit too much. And so, you know, I was like, ah, this is really working. So I was like, this is what I need to do. And I was also still bringing in some of the cool elements of my training, like some of the Superman pushups, stuff like that. And, and people were really digging it. So I was like, yeah, this is, this is the next step. At that time, I didn't have a name for it or anything, but I was like, this is the structure I want to use. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so I, I just kind of came, came with the name and, you know, I released this program back in the end of February and it just, it just crushed. It just did so nice. well. And I was blown away by how well it did and, and the response I was getting and, um, yes it's been a it's been a just a killer journey you know and so that's just kind of that's just become i've embodied i've embodied the functional method and i'm really like just really trying to like turn it into a brand and um you know really just kind of inspire people to embrace this training system and um to continue to to make gains and, and get better and get stronger get faster but do it as safely as possible and do it yeah. in a way that you know we can do this for five ten 15, 20 years and not be just so beat up that we can't, you know, that we have to take a week off or two weeks off every yeah. couple months. So, uh, yeah. So that's, wow. that's interesting, yeah. bud. And, and so like, I'm assuming like when you sort of started putting these programs and everything together, uh, your Instagram account was like sort of on, on the sort of not on the side, but like there was like where you're publishing a lot of your stuff. How, can you just talk us through like how this, this grows like so massively over time, you know, because it's just, I mean, it's incredible, you know, the, the sort of following that you have. Um, was there any like sort of turning points or anything in particular, like, or was it your story you were telling or your background? What do, do you have any sort of idea? 
Well, you know, it's funny. I can look back to the very early days of it. I remember I was dating this girl at the time and I remember, you know, it's going to sound silly and it was a lot of like ego at the time, but I remember looking at some accounts that had like 20,000 followers and I was like, man, like, I just like, I really want to get 20,000 followers. <laughs> you know, and I remember I kept, kept telling her that. I was like, I'm going to fucking do it. You know? <laughs> I was just like really determined. So like I, I laid my life on the line in the gym, man. I'd be flipping, falling on my head, you know, to like create videos that people liked and wanted, yeah. you know, to, whatever. And um, so I just did it for a while. And like, you know, it started just like growing a little bit. I remember like I hit 10K being like, oh wow, you know, it's just it's uh -huh. going somewhere. And, and then, you know, the consistency is so important. So anytime mm -hmm. you're trying to build a social media following, that kind of thing, consistency is incredibly important. So, and that's just one thing that I did. I became hooked on it, right? So like my addictive personality can be really beneficial sometimes. <laughs> if, I, if I harness it properly, it can really, it can really be good. And I, th I think that's what I kind of did. And so over time, it just kept growing and and growing and again i shared I mean, about the diabetes about my addiction mm -hmm. and just kind of kept that going and yeah as time goes on you know tons of consistency and um more people get to see you the next thing you know you start getting shout outs from, from bigger pages and you know one of the things i always refuse to do from the start is i refuse to pay mm -hmm. for, any, for any kind of followers or anything like that so yeah. I never did i was like nope like my ego is like That's not awesome. gonna allow me to, to to do that. It needed to be yeah. completely organic. So cool. and then yeah, man, here here I am today. You know, just <laughs> five six years of working really hard at it. It's uh, it's turned into something pretty great. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yes. You, tell us about this. I mean, Eric, um, you you've done some collaborations and stuff with some cool people, and you do and you're doing a few. Um, workshops and stuff coming up over the f coming months and that kind of thing is he a good a good guy like he just i love his workouts his kettlebell workouts are like insane and he seems like a really nice guy as well yeah su super cool kid man he's he's, yeah. a, he's a younger guy he's like 20 24 i think yeah and he's just killing it man he, he's literally yeah. i remember when i first saw some of his stuff i was like damn this dude this dude's a beast man <laughs> yeah. i think most people probably have that reaction when they see him man he's yeah he's, you know, he's jacked. He's, he does some cool stuff, man. He's kind of, he has a style that's very unique, even yeah. though kettlebells aren't unique anymore. Like his, just his yeah. style is unique. Um, and so that kind of drew me to him and yeah, we, you know, we follow each other for a little while and then, uh, I ended up going down there a few months ago and yeah, we worked out together and, uh, hung out at the Onnit gym and yeah, yeah, really, really cool dude. And we're like, Hey, yeah, let's, let's, let's collaborate. And, and uh so cool do some workshops so, yeah we'll we'll see how it goes man i think it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time you know the first one is in santa monica california in august so yeah we'll we'll see how it goes i'm sure it's gonna be great you know and get some people in there share our knowledge yeah. and, and uh, yeah it's gonna be a good time yeah for yeah. sure that's super cool man and are you finding now like you're sort of getting more um you know, people or organizations reach out to you like to on more specifically to do talks and things like that, you know, to talk about your journey. Yeah, I've definitely gotten, it's more, it's more about business and people want to promote products than anything yeah. else. Mm. But yeah, you know, I've definitely, you know, like I've done a couple of podcasts and things. I would, I would love to do some more speaking. Like one of my dreams is to, you know, I, I don't like to call it like motivational speaking because I don't yeah. know if I'm really necessarily a motivational speaker, but um, I think it'd be cool to do some talks, um, yeah. you know, in public with some people. I think that'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, so I haven't really had the opportunity to really do anything like that yet, but, but yeah, man, a lot of it's just, just junk, man. I yeah. mean, the amount of emails I get, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, and like, I'm just so, I don't, I mean, you guys see it. I don't, I don't really, I don't do, I don't do any of that stuff on my page. Yeah. yeah. I don't care yeah, how much sure. money you're going to pay me. Like generally if I don't like your product or, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? I'm just, there's no way I'm going to post about it. Yeah, totally. No way, yeah. So. yeah. You're not going to so sell cool. yourself short, but it is just like, there's so much junk out there, isn't there? It's you just like, yeah. you know, there's no point. Exactly. But you it know, must be tempting, I guess, when someone's saying, Hey, like I'll give you like 10 grand or whatever. Like, I guess it's, you know, people are throwing things at you. Uh, you obviously have to think about it because you're also making a living. So I guess it's like finding that balance, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. You know, it's definitely picking the right people to work with, right? So for a yeah. while, you know, I was sponsored by a company called Performix, a supplement company, and you know, and, and they, I just did research on them too. Like I was so big on like, you know, a lot of different 
you know, supplement companies have reached out to me over the years, but on this particular company, like it seemed really cool. And I got to meet the CEO of the company. who was just a really awesome dude and uh, really connected to their brand. And um, so that was a different thing. You know, obviously, you know, I got paid well, you know, to, to yeah. do it. And certainly, you know, this is business and you know, yeah. some opportunities surely you definitely want to take. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just, there is a lot of crap. It's important to kind of weed out you know, yeah. the, the, the crap and um, really get with a, a brand or company that's really, that's really solid, you know, through and through. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so Jay, uh, like, first of all, uh, I reckon uh, you'd be like an amazing uh, motivational speaker for the lack of uh, another word. Um, you know, we actually just spoke to this, uh, this guy, uh, his name is Paul DeGelda, um, an Australian guy. He was bitten by a shark, had his leg and arm bitten off. And he's yeah. now like a, a motivational speaker. But it's, it's also like it's these stories which people that re- really resonate with people, you know. So you'd speak so well. And, I, you know, I can imagine you'd be a great, uh, a great talker. So definitely, you know, we, we hope that that happens for you. Oh, thank you. But, but so, so if someone is like just, you know, sort of I guess before we finish off, if someone is looking to get into fitness but has literally not done any their whole life, What's your kind of like advice to people just sort of starting off? That's a tough one. You know, yeah. I think my, my first reaction is, and most people don't have the luxury of being able to hire a trainer, but if someone were in maybe in a position where they could afford some kind of one-on-one training, that would be my suggestion. You know, get, get with someone that knows what they're doing, learn a little bit about fitness and, and proper technique and proper form. Um, and, you know, even even some – you know, CrossFit gyms, I think are good. You know, not, not, not all the technique is bad in CrossFit. There are some gyms and coaches out there that are really good that can really teach you a lot. Um, and then sometimes these classes aren't, aren't so bad too, you know, maybe just get your foot in the door with any of these like, you know, franchises, you know, like Barry's boot camp, you know, all these different mm. things. And maybe just something, um, a kickboxing class, um, just get it, get into something, you know, and just kind of get your foot in the door. I think, I think is really important and and like understanding that like you you have the power mm. you know mm. um certainly it might might not feel that way sometimes and you're like oh why do i keep <laughs> eating this shitty food or yeah. you know why, why am i not you know it's like like i get that for sure you know but it's like man you gotta get up and do it yeah yeah like you gotta do something you know it's just it, it all goes by too fast to not mm to not get off our ass and, and do something we want to do, you know? Totally and and just, just on the back of that, like if you, if, if someone's listening to this and they're like struggling with addiction and stuff like that, do you recommend finding um, a 12 step program? Yeah, hundred percent. I really do. And it's, it's really, um, it's really beneficial. I think one of the most important things for anyone that's trying to get sober, or, you know, get out of that darkness of addiction and, and alcoholism. And it's like, you, you need help. You know, it's just impossible to do it on your own, you know, so whether it be a 12-step program or talking to a family member or whatever, man, talking to a priest or whatever it may be, a therapist, it's like, you got to just, just talk about it, man, talk yeah. about it, you know, and just, and just do your best to, to open up about it and get it out there and, and uh, yeah, and know that you can't do it alone, you know, and stop, yeah. stop trying to fight it, you know, stop trying to to handle it all, manage it all, because ultimately the disease of alcoholism is always going to win, man, without, without help from others. So. Mm-hmm. Powerful stuff, buddy. So um, just before we kind of finish off, uh, what's uh, the best way for people to find out about you and, you know, what's sort of the next kind of few months or, you know, year or whatever got in store for yourself? Yeah, so people can go to my website, which is thefunctionalmethod.com. That's where all my programs are at. Uh, I can learn more about my programs and my my training and, and that kind of thing. And then also, obviously, my Instagram handle, which is JTM underscore fit. Uh, and then actually, I just started a YouTube channel as well uh, cool. Called, cool. called The Functional Method. So I'll be putting out more content, doing more tutorials and giving people a little more in-depth view on me and my philosophies and that kind of thing. And um, yeah, in the next couple of months, I'm, I'm creating the, the, the sequel to, to the functional method. So the functional method 2.0, 
uh, nice. creating right now. So it's just a lot, a lot of work. Uh, but we're getting it done, getting it done as quick as I can. So I'm really excited to <clears throat> to release that and bring that out to people, man, because people really enjoyed the first one. So yeah, just doing that. I got a couple workshops and you know, doing a little traveling. And honestly, it's just just living, just living the dream right now. So. <laughs> Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, just so from my side there, Jay, like, let me just say thank you so much for your time. It's been a real pleasure listening to you. You um, are certainly a humble guy, even though you like doing so much amazing stuff and you speak with um, such an honesty that uh, it's hard not to just like want to listen to you and, and like you a lot. So that's uh, really, really cool, man. We really um, we totally appreciate that kind of a person, you know, Gareth and I, and I think lots of other people too, you know, just like you said, not, not buying your followers on Instagram, for example, things like that, you know, it just, it makes a difference and, and it shows. And that's how you will be a motivational speaker and person because you are naturally motivational because there's, there's no, there's no bullshit to your being, you know, and, and I think more and more these days, people, have a massive filter for that and so i think just that that vulnerability the honesty uh it, it totally shows and i think that's like that's the magic right there and i think people will um there will be people out there listening to your story that will like you said earlier as well like it will just be going in and and they because they've got the bullshit filter um they'll they'll filter a lot of people's stories out but yours might actually fall into them and hear them and they'll hear you uh, and I think that's um, really a cool aspect to the way you're doing things. So, so thanks for your time today from my side. And uh, we just uh, can't wait to, to check your YouTube channel and see all the cool stuff that you, you're busy with. I, I really appreciate it. You guys are seriously awesome. This is definitely one of the best talks I've had, you know. So I really appreciate you guys. And thanks a lot for having me on. But that's so cool, man. Thanks for saying that. And um, yeah, yeah, just briefly you. from my side, like... But what a great story, man. And like you, you just went so raw and were so honest about, you know, all the details and that's so important, you know, and, and thanks for like sort of not even holding anything back. Um, I think there's a lot of people out there that are struggling with various different things and will be able to sort of relate and resonate with your story. And, you know, you're a seriously motivational guy, you know, and mm -hmm. It's uh, like Craig said, it's so nice to see that you're so humble. Um, it's so nice to, to hear how, like how hardworking you are. And it's just a privilege to chat to somebody like you, you know, and every, yeah. the whole time you, you know, but you've had a tough life, that's for sure. But you, you've still got a smile on your face, you know, and you still massively appreciate the fact that you're just alive and, and it's just sort of really shows. So you know, you're definitely a, a ridiculously cool human. So, uh, you know, yeah, thanks thank a lot you. for your time, buddy. And um, we just wish you all the best, man. You just, you're a top bloke. So thanks very much. Oh, thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, cool, my man. Cool, man. Cheers. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change. Snowy Cape Fold, mountain range. Gotta be quick so far to go.